Okay. Um, so let me I'm going to introduce our speaker. He's going to make some remarks, and then we'll go to a, a question and answer interview format. Um, Samsung is an incredible success story. As you heard, it was started in 1969. It now has a market capitalization of $350 billion. Uh, this year, um, it will have revenues in excess of $200 billion. And this quarter, just reported for last quarter, uh, earnings of $12.8 billion, which was a record for uh, the company. Uh, the company has roughly 325,000 employees around the world, about 17, 18,000 or so in the United States. Uh, Dr. O.H. Kwan uh, is a native of South Korea. He got his undergraduate degree in electrical engineering at Seoul National University, and then got his master's degree in, uh, in Korea as well, but then got his PhD in electrical engineering in, at Stanford University in 1985. And in 1985, he then joined Samsung and worked his way up to be the head of the, the uh, semiconductor division, which is by far the most profitable part of Samsung. And he is a CEO and the vice chairman of the board. And as you may have read, uh, recently he announced that he would be stepping down uh, next year. So we will talk a little bit later about why somebody with these incredible numbers wants to step down at the top, but among other reasons, uh, uh, you know, he's got an incredible success story in, in building Samsung to, uh, with the help of many others, to this incredible uh, half, uh, point that it's now reached. So uh, without any further ado, let me ask Dr. Kwan to make um, opening remarks, and then we'll have a question and answer format. Thank you. Uh, thank you, David. I really appreciate the chance to be here with you and the distinguished guest today. I want to take a few minutes to talk about Samsung Electronics. Samsung Electronics was founded in 1969, the same year when Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon. It, the, the, the start was a, a small uh, staff of the company just making black and TVs. Since then, the company has made tremendous giant to live to contribute to Korea's economic growth as well as the world IT industry. In the early 70s, Samsung Electronics quickly expanded its product lineups to include refrigerators, air conditioners, and washing machines. We are a mere local player in Korea until the beginning of memory chip business in the early 80s. Entering the memory chip business was not easy at first. We faced negative press and deep skepticism from the industry, both domestic and foreign. Even people within the company had uh, strong doubts and concerns, but we pressed on to, to open a new chapter in our history under the determined leadership of Samsung's founder, Byung-Chul Lee, and his successor, Gunny Lee. The road was bumpy and rough in the 80s. However, we made a relentless effort to overcome our disadvantages. We all share the clear common goal, that is to become global leader in semiconductor industry. In the, uh, in the early 80s, 90s, the founders strong commitment and the employees dedication finally made it possible to compete with the top players in the industry. In the following two decades, our success in the semiconductor business had a positive impact on other businesses in Samsung, including flat panel displays, TVs, and handphones. It created a virtuous cycle that has grow driven the growth of Samsung Electronics so far. Now, the IT industry is entering a new era of breathtaking innovations such as AI, IoT, cloud, and 5G. 
all these technologies will have a profound impact on our lives and our society. Individuals, a businessman, and government will experience productivity innovations enabled, uh, enabled by artificial super intelligence. Consequently, long-term social societal goals such as health, environment, the program to improve our quality of life will be attained. In these momentous times, Samsung Electronics will continue to fulfill these societal needs by leveraging our core capabilities. Samsung's technology leadership in semiconductors and displays will drive innovations in data center, autonomous vehicles, and industrial IoT. In addition, the company's ability to integrate hardware platform with software can deliver value to customers who aspire to change the world. Samsung is ready to shape the future in collaboration with others. The history of the company is a series of fundamental uh, determined efforts to overcome different changes. With the arrival of the AI, IoT, cloud, and 5G, Samsung Electronics is about to face yet another set of changes. In this sense, I need changes by myself. That is why last week I announced early retirement to give some a chance for the next leadership. My new leadership at Samsung will continue to make a full efforts to achieve our missions, to inspire the world, and create the future. Finally, I would like to conclude by saying that I could be more than honored to speak here today and to have discussions with David. Thank you. So normally, if somebody has a record quarter, $12.8 billion in a quarter of earnings, uh, they would say, I'll stay a few more years and reap the benefits of that. So why are you leaving? Actually, call the career the oldest things. It's best time to live when you are in the pit. So <laughs> OK. All right, so what are you going to do when you retire? Uh, it's a secret, anyway. <laughs> Actually, the, until next March, I stay in, the, in Samsung to take care of the board membership and a kind of operation. But after March, who knows? Samsung is a, actually is a very dynamic society. So I think I have a plan. I, actually, the, my personal plan is how to support the young guys as startup, as a mentor. But if there are some another missions of Samsung Group, I should do that is uh, in Korean right. culture. So let's talk about your businesses. One of them, uh, I'll get to the semiconductor one in a moment. One of them is the smartphone business. Yes, You're the biggest manufacturer of smartphones in the world. Is that right? True. So like I have a, an iPhone here. It's, uh, a, you, it's quite unfortunate. You don't, now are you allowed to? It's OK, because in the, in the iPhone, there are a lot of the Samsung components out there. OK. <laughs> All right. OK. So now do you have, uh, what kind of phone do you have? Uh, of course, I have Samsung, right? All right. Because I received the, the salaries from Samsung Electronics. I should use this. Is one. that better than this? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a taste, depending on the, the personal taste. Maybe some guys uh, prefer Samsung, some persons prefer iPhone. But I think both, both phones are great. Now, like, for example, you have a daughter. If your daughter bought an iPhone, what would you say? It's OK. But fortunately, she bought Galaxy. She okay. <laughs> so, uh, what is the advance in semiconductors in iPhones or in your kind of phone, Samsung phone, that will revolutionize this business in a year or two? In other words, what new advances can there be? I think this is uh, tough because in technology, I must have a background in engineering technology. But whenever time goes by, the engineers have developed quite enormous things. So when I was uh, 10 years old, oh, it is impossible. They made it. So I always uh, the positive 
Some guys are making non-expected technologies. That's what I want. I think it will help the customers and the society. All right, let's talk about flat screen TVs. You're the biggest manufacturer of flat screen TVs in the world. Is that right? Uh, not right now, because few years, because uh, at the amount of uh, volume wise, unit wise, I think the old Chinese manufacturer is more Who is? Chinese manufacturer. Okay. Combined but together. Now, if somebody wants to buy a regular TV today, an old fashioned TV, big, thick, that, that you don't, that you can't buy those anymore, they're gone. Uh, no, I, yeah, I think recently the the TV market is shrunken because everybody watching rather than TV, just watching the smartphone rather than TV. So I think there may be some chance in TV market com to combine with the new technology, so but, called AI or something. But do you like worry that. that the whole flat screen TV business will go away and everything uh, will just go to computers? Uh, no, I don't think so because. Uh, even TV itself has uh, some functions, and I guess there are some another new waves included. I think TV, okay. even the shrunken, but I think still there's a market. Now, uh, still though we have a shoes, right? Now, <laughs> it used to be that Sony had a very popular TV called the Sony Trinitron. Mm -hmm. Then I guess that doesn't isn't made anymore. But uh, is Sony uh, a competitor of yours in TVs, or do you make Sony's TVs? Uh, Sony is recovering recently, I heard, because uh, actually the 10 or 20 years ago, Sony is a big number. It's the number one, unique one. But uh, they, I, I, I'm difficult to say to other companies, but Sony is uh, missing the flat panel display at the time, so it's a downturn, but recently I heard that they are recovering a little bit. Now, um, in South Korea, are people worried about Kim Jong-un? Are you worried? I mean, people in the United States are worried, but whenever I go to South Korea, they don't seem as worried as people here are. Why is that? Uh, I personally worry about him because, uh, and the Koreans is worried about him and was worried about uh, North Korea's situation. But last uh, more than 50 years, we were we are always uh, threatened by North Korea's uh, kind of verbal threatment or kind. So we are getting used to. But they are all worried about. But uh, the foreigners, uh, rather than foreigners, oh, it looks like same. So I don't know. I think I, th I think we are worried about that situation, frankly. But problem is, I have no influence to him, right? <laughs> now, is that haircut of his? An un is that a Korean thing or what is that? Uh, no, it's a quite unique style. I don't know. It's quite strange, yeah. That's okay. That's not a Korean thing. It's just yeah, his. No. Okay. <laughs> I okay. think his own uh, hairstyle, I guess. <laughs> okay. So and let's talk about semiconductors for okay. a moment. Um, now, do you, you know how to design a semiconductor, right? Mm -hmm. So that is your expertise. You're a semiconductor engineer. Okay. So how long does it take to design a semiconductor for, let's say, a smartphone? I think there are so many kinds of semiconductors, but normally there are memory chips or SOC, but usually from the start concept to design and manufacturing, and testing, and deliver to market. I think uh, usually uh, two or three years from the start okay. to end, end product. And who is your biggest competitor in making semiconductors today? Uh, there are different areas. Actually, memory is, uh, the memory is, there are two kinds, DRAM and flash. DRAM is, uh, of course, Korean SK Hynix. And then the flash is uh, Japanese makers uh, Toshiba, and the logic, there's a, there are so many companies, so it's, it's very difficult to say. Right. Now, in the United States, you have, I think, 17 or 18,000 employees, something like that. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So your, your biggest facility is your semiconductor manufacturing facility in Austin, True. which you said you've mm -hmm. invested about 17 mm -hmm. billion in. Mm -hmm. So um, is that where you make, manufacture most of your semiconductors used in the United States, in, in Austin? Uh, actually, in Austin, we are making the logic chips. It was uh, produced in Austin, and a majority of chips are used in United States companies. I see. Yeah. And today, uh, what percentage of your business is in Korea? What percentage is in the United States? What percentage is in other countries? Uh, Samsung Electronics, uh, the domestic portion is very small, below 10%. And the other areas, well balanced, the US may be around the 30%. And Europe is also 30, uh, below the 25, something like that. And China is a 30% and the rest. So I think it's a well-balanced in the regional wise. Now, the vice chairman of 
Samsung, a member of the, of the family that started the, uh, Samsung, was uh, convicted uh, mm -hmm. recently, and he's in jail for mm -hmm. five years appealing that. Mm -hmm. So has that affected your company? It doesn't seem to have. You're doing pretty well. But what's the impact on your company of having uh, a, a grandson of the founder in jail? Uh, it's a kind of tragedy, so it is on the way, so I cannot comment on the, on the situation. But I think the business-wise, uh, we are pretty well as you take out the index. But uh, Samsung Electronics has a plan every year from short-term plan to long-term plan. So regardless of the J's, uh, the J list in, in jail, the business itself is going well today. So that means, as a short term, we have not big impact. But as a long term, if we, it's, as an organic growth wise, it's okay. But if you move to another inorganic growth target, we need some, some advice, some chairman's groups advice. So in that sense, we are some um, handicaps right now. Okay, so who is gonna pick your successor? Are you the person picking the successor? Uh, the board member, that is it. I uh, delivered a message to the board members in advance. The board members will select my successor, but uh, I recommend who is the right guy for me, but decided by, them, by, by board members, not by me. I'm just a recommendation. Okay. So if somebody wanted to know where the consumer electronics industry was gonna go in five or 10 years, what do you think are the most important new developments we're likely to see in consumer electronics in the next five or 10 years? Top question. If I know it, I do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think the all the oh, that's true. So, there are so many rooms to be improved in all the electronic devices. I like to mention TV. I think it's combined the AI or IoT. It will provide another values and the same. And the next two wave is uh, uh, I think is a kind of smart home. And the Samsung considered a kind of digital health care. And another one is automotive industry. So. There is another big thing, big wave, I guess. So today, um, as you look at your job over the last number of years, what has been the biggest challenge you have faced in, in running Samsung? Because as you know, the IT industry, or the, of course the other industry, is changing so fast. Nobody can expect what's going on in the next 10 years. So that means how to prepare our company to sustain. That means the important thing is how to change our corporate cultures and the mentality and the how to educate the talent. That is the most uh, okay. the focus. On now, you, you got your undergraduate degree in, in electrical engineering in Korea, but mm -hmm. your PhD, as I mentioned here, mm -hmm. were there many Korean PhD students in electrical engineering in 1985 in Stanford? Not much, not much, few. And so when you told people you were going to go back and work in Korea, were people surprised? Or is that what you always wanted to do, is to go back to Korea? Uh, when actually, the, that is more than 30 years ago, more than 50, 40 years ago. When I went to US to study, it's most, my first uh, the, the dream is to become professor, frankly speaking. But at Stanford, as you know, the University environment is quite difficult, different from Koreans. So I changed my mind. Oh. <laughs> oh. Because at the time, early 70s in Korea, PhD guys has no job except university. Because the industry level is so low, there's no R&D. There is no reason to go to industry. But when I arrived in the US, wow, there is uh, so many opportunities especially in the, at the time the Silicon Valley is okay. booming. So I decided to join the, uh, the, the, the industry rather than academia. But have you ever thought you stayed in, in Silicon Valley, you could have started your own company, you could have built your own Samsung electronics or something like that? Uh, no? No. I think that <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it was it's a, one of the, my best decisions to join Samsung because uh, the, there are a lot of the opportunities for me to handle because it is possible to have so many what, uh, practice and exercise and trials in big companies. So, so I, I, mean, I enjoy it. Now, now that's when, you, when you joined Samsung in 1985, yeah. it was a modest company compared to today. Yeah. And it was one of many chibles in South Korea. There were a number of them. There still are. 
But Samsung zoomed past everybody else and became so much bigger. What was the reason? Was it harder work, smarter people? What, what was the reason? I maybe all combined together, but I think in my opinion, as our founder, he always starting the, when he started the, his business uh, 1938, something like that, starting the trading business. But always the, focusing on the, always talking talent first. So he recruited the peoples and educated, he invested a lot. And the second one is technology. So he invested the, the talent and uh, the technology. And he provided all kinds of resources and opportunities right. to do something. So all the people's employees working very hard to achieve some goals. That is why some difference in Korea compared to other companies. Okay. And today, uh, as you look at the future of Samsung, where do you think its future? Is it going to be more in semiconductors or smartphones or uh, TVs, computer screens? Where do you think the greatest profitability in the future is? I don't measure like that because it's top secret. <laughs> because uh, some companies follow the Samsung style. Right. I, frankly speaking, uh, we are focusing right now. Next, I mentioned the next big thing is a kind of IoT related project that's including healthcare or whatever. And another thing is uh, uh, automobile related parts. That is we are recently the m and hammer. Now have you ever thought that when you leave Samsung that if you joined a private equity firm, you could um, start a technology company and you get 20% of the profits. Uh, Samsung, you don't get 20% of the profits. So have you ever thought of starting your own semiconductor company or doing something on your own with some private equity money backing you? <laughs> you wouldn't do that? Uh, it's a tough question. Uh. But I think recently the yeah, semiconductor industry is a very technology-oriented uh, industry. It's very tough to develop the new technology. Second one is it's very uh, capex-intensive industry. So the other country, the other company, to start again is very tough, I guess, in my opinion. So maybe semiconductor industry is already fixed, and it's a, still the fabulous companies are consolidated still because there are so many R&Ds. Nobody can handle that one. So, so, so you don't want to do that. <laughs> no. So what about what do you do for relaxation? Um, and are you a golfer or a runner or what do you do? Uh, I, I, I play golf. It's not good golf, but I, I your, like it. Your handicap is what? Uh, hand, what? It is another top secret. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I'm enjoying the golf, but uh, yeah, because I think I told my staffs to make as many same hobbies with your spouse, it's, uh, either your wife or husband, because uh, that is I'm pushing my wife to play golf because it's, uh, it's possible to play practice in the, in the old age. So another one is, uh, I go to sing with my wife. Right. So and uh, ever, ever, another the hobby is, uh, is uh, listening music together and uh, going to the museum. That is uh, okay. with my wife. So you showed me earlier, you have pictures of your grandchild. You have one grandchild. Mm -hmm. And how old is? Just one year old. One year. Just and, past one year. And she speaks English and Korean and? No, no language. No, no language. <laughs> he, the, she, he is quite open to speak any language. Right now, he is just a natural language. So your goal for Samsung at, after you leave is it to continue to be the, 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 the most valuable technology company in the world? Is that your goal for the company? I hope so. Why not? Because I think in, in Samsung, in the sense, including all the organizations, I think we have two missions as a CEO. How to survive, because I think that she's very tough. Second is how to sustain the company, because uh, just uh, one single pig and this shepherd is not meaningful. So I think all the creatures is, is like same. It's a survival and sustain. So I'm always thinking about that way, how to surviving tough industry, how to sustain the industry. The base is technology. 
So, yeah, that's so what is more important to the future of Samsung? Is it the business in the United States or the business in China? Uh, I think the both, because the China market itself is big. But all the innovations, new ideas, in my opinion, came from US. So US and China is the, the most the, the important market. So today, as you look at uh, the other companies you compete with, who are the competitors that you, are mo you most admire? As you know, uh, admire, actually Samsung is a quite unique company, it's covering from the components to device. So sometimes we are competing, or some, sometimes we are partners. So in some sense, in the semiconductor, we admire, I mentioned, the Toshiba, we are the Qualcomm, there are so many companies. And uh, the device level, yeah, of course, Apple is one of them, Sony, we admire. But problem is, in IT industry, suddenly new companies coming out. So we should really carefully watch out who will be the, our the competitors. <laughs> yeah. no. Maybe in the garage, I'm not quite sure. Now, if, if somebody said to you, look, I, I'm going to buy a new phone today. It's yeah. going to be an, either an iPhone or a Samsung. What is the best argument for buying a Samsung over an iPhone? Why is your phone better than the, this phone? Decide by yourselves. <laughs> I think the, uh, each phone has their one uh, strong points and weak points. I think a Samsung phone has a hardware-wise one of the best, but in the in the service, in some sense, I think the Apple is a little better. So it's uh, depending on your taste. Don't ask me which one is better. It's uh, the American style, uh, the the sushi or kimchi. I don't know. It depends on your right. taste. All right. So um, let me ask you a final question. So as you look back on your career at Samsung. What are you most proud of what you have achieved? Because when I joined the Samsung, I mentioned it's a local company. Nobody knows Samsung except in Korea. And we started the semiconductor. I'm kidding, because nobody believed it. And uh, there are some rumors in Korea at the time, OK, Samsung will be collapsed pretty soon. But we catch up. And it took more than 30 years Right now, it's very close to be number one position semiconductor. I'm just starting my career as semiconductor. And this year, it becomes number one, and luckily anyway. So that is, uh, I'm, uh, it's time to retire. I'm quite proud, part of the some to achieving, achieving that kind of position. Okay, well, it's a very impressive achievement. I think if you had joined a private equity firm, you would have made a little more money, but, um, <laughs> but money isn't everything, right? So thank you very much for okay. your time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.